Hi guys, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel. Welcome back to Fallout 4 Modding. With the release of Nexus Mod Manager support for Fallout 4, I wanted to give you a primer on its installation and use. We'll go over where to get it, how to install it on your computer, and set it up for the first time. Then I'll explain basic functions and tips including logging into the Nexus and building profiles. Finally, we'll show you the two ways to install mods in Nexus Mod Manager and activating them in your new profiles. There is a lot to cover, so let's get started! So let's get started downloading the Nexus Mod Manager. And if you come to the top of the Nexus page, you can go to any of them. You, this is Fallout 4, but if you go to Skyrim or Fallout New Vegas, any of them, they'll have the same bar right up here. And this is at the very top. You can see right there. Let's clear that off. Install Nexus Mod Manager 0.61.0. Go ahead and click that. And it's going to take you to the Nexus Mod Manager open beta page. Don't worry about it being an open beta. It's perfectly fine. If you've not made a account with the Nexus mods, I would go ahead and do so. You can see I have mine right here. But if you want to be downloading mods from the Nexus directly into Nexus Mod Manager, you're going to need an account. Don't worry, it's perfectly free unless you want to go ahead and get premium, then you'll get faster speeds, but there's still no limit on the standard membership. So what you're going to do is go to the Download Vista Win 7, Win 8, and Win 10 tab, and you click Download. And that's going to download it to wherever you keep your downloads. And you can see I already have it on my desktop right here, right there. So what you're going to do is go ahead and double click on the Nexus Mod Manager 0.61.0 exec. And this will get you started. Go ahead and click yes. And select your language. Of course, mine is English, as you can probably hear that. And then you go ahead and click next. This is the licensing agreement. I would go ahead and just scan this, make sure there's nothing there but definitely read that sort of stuff. I accept the agreement and click Next. Please read before installing this version. Definitely read this stuff. It's not that long of a, a message. I would do so and uh, make sure you understand everything that's there. Go ahead and click Next. This is where you're gonna start to install Nexus Mod Manager into your preferred directory. Most people will install it on programs Nexus Mod Manager. Of course, I have my games on a different drive, and I suggest that even if you do have it on your C drive, you do not install it into x86 program files or any program files that may be controlled by Windows protections for, you know, writing and overwriting those type of things. I would go ahead and make that choice and install it someplace else. Now, if you have wherever your Steam is installed, it's probably your best choice. When you come over and look at my games and you go to Games Drive, you can see this is where my Steam app is. I want to go ahead and install it on my games drive so it will control everything that's on this but won't have the controls of the restrictions of Windows 10. So we're going to go ahead and change mine to the G drive and you can just go and click that and click G. Now if you want to browse someplace else you can go ahead and go find out where your C drive is and then go choose a different program file. Remember we don't want x86. I would select a new folder for that wherever your games are installed but you can figure out how to do that. So mine is going to be on my G drive. We're going to click next. And this setup will create the program shortcut, shortcuts in the following startup menu. To continue, click next. If you'd like to select a different folder, click browse. I'm fine with that. Do not create a startup menu. I'm fine with that as well. But if you want one in your start menu, you can do that. Click next. I would go ahead and leave most of these boxes checked. Uh, I want a desktop icon, so I'm going to leave that checked, and I would leave all these checked for sure. Make sure that uh, these are all checked for your proper file downloads. Go and click Next. You're going to get a summary of everything that you just did. Go ahead and install that. Here's the uh, updates and features, bug fixes, that sort of stuff. Read this stuff. It's probably good to know, but it's not necessary. Go ahead and click Next. And it says, completing the Nexus Mod Manager Setup Wizard. Setup has finished installing Nexus Mod Manager on your computer. The application may be launched by selecting the installed icons. Click Finish to exit Setup. Launch Nexus Mod Manager. We're going to go and do that right now and get started. And click Finish. And you're going to be presented with this window. And what it's doing is checking all your games. So you can see if, if it has any supported games that you may be, you know, using Nexus Mod Manager to run. You can see I have Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Those are actually controlled by 
mod organizer, but you know, for Fallout 4, I'm gonna let Nexus Mod Manager do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the next button, and that, or the check button right here, and that will tell that Nexus Mod Manager to go ahead and control Fallout 4. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and I'm going to click Quick Startup. And don't worry, if you wanna go back and, you know, rescan the games, you can go and do that and make your choices later on. When you're into Nexus Mod Manager itself, you can go ahead and do the same thing and rescan the games and decide if you want to have them managed by that. I'm going to have click Don't Ask Me Next Time because I just want it to open up Fallout 4. Click OK. You need to set up the pass where Nexus Mod Manager will store mod archives, the mod installation registry, and where the mod files are installed. If you use previous versions of Nexus Mod Manager, this version requires you to revise your folder settings. Click OK to continue with the startup screen. OK. And you can see the directories that you will be installing these on. Now, you can go ahead and change where these are, and it's not going to affect performance. This is basically where things are stored. So, of course, I want to put it in a storage drive. And if we go back to our computer again, I do have a storage drive. It's basically just a really big hard drive, not an SSD. And I don't really care what goes on here. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change to the E drive in my games. But if you want to select something else, you could do that. And you can see now it'll be E, Games, Nexus Mod Manager Fallout 4 Mods, and E, Games, Nexus Mod Manager Fallout 4 Install Info. But if you want to go ahead and change all that, you can do the same way. However you want to do it is fine. Do not change anything in the virtual mod installation. I would suggest leaving this as it is. It's going to install on the games drive. It's just a virtual folder. I wouldn't worry about that. Go and click finish. And it's going to give you a warning. The folders you select are empty. If this is your first time running Nexus Mod Manager for this game, or if you want a fresh install, this isn't a problem, and you can continue. And we can continue. You currently don't have any file categories set up. Would you like Nexus Mod Manager to organize your mods based on categories? The Nexus site uses, yes, or would you like to organize your categories yourself? I want to organize my categories myself. I'm going to click no. And there we go. Let's open this up and we'll take a look at it. This is your first look at Nexus Mod Manager. This may be all new to you, but if you've used Nexus Mod Manager before, this is nothing new. So you can see I have no mods installed, and we're going to change that view to a simple view. And you can go down here, switches the Mod Manager views, boom. And it's going to basically just give me a blank, no categories view. Going from left to right at the top, you can see we have a launch Fallout 4 mod, uh, button. Go ahead and click that. Would you like Nexus Mod Manager to close after launching the game? No, I don't want it to close. I want it to stay open because I'll be doing a lot of modding. I want to have it back and forth, and I don't want to reopen the game. Click no. And you can see we go directly into launching Fallout 4. So you can use that button if you're modding the game and want to test it without having to go out of it to launch the game. Click Exit. And you can see we have different options here. None of them are actually active right now, but we can go ahead and do that. Now you can see we have New Profile. Now if you go ahead and click the drop-down menu, you can rename the current profile. You can have the new profile, rename current profile, remove current profile, or save current profile. So we can go ahead and rename this one, and I'm going to call it profile number one, and we're going to go ahead and call it vanilla. And we're going to click OK. Then we're going to go ahead and create a new profile again, and we're going to name it Dirty Weasel or however you want to call it. Now, my suggestion is to make sure that your save game is included in this, and I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses, and in my character in the first run through of the game is Martin. We'll go ahead and leave that open. Go and say OK. So you can see now you can go ahead and put in whatever you want. You have vanilla, or you can have dirty weasel. So over here you have the tools button. You have to click down, you can have the different tools that you want to have. There's probably not much here you want to see, but if you want to go ahead and you know do that, you could. This is the Open Folders button. If you open the folders up, you can open the Game folder and go directly to 
wherever you keep your game. So under, of course, mine is on my games drive, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 4. You know, it's where most of the game data files are kept. That's a handy tool, so if you want to go in and make changes manually, you can. Next is Mod Manager Mods folder. And you can see this is where we put the storage drive. E storage games, Nexus Mod Manager, Fallout 4, and mods. We can go ahead and close that. Don't worry about any of this stuff. It's just storage that it's keeping there. And then finally, a drop down menu, open Nexus Mod Manager, install info folder. And you can see it's under the install info file, and it's overwrites and install log. And then, of course, you have the tips, right? We don't need to read all that. Supported tools. We'll get to this in a later date, but if you want to uh, see all of your supported tools, you would go ahead and do that. Uh, loot, Rybash, uh, I guess it would be FO4 edit when it's done, but you know, for right now, that's fine. There won't be anything there for you to change. Over here, you have update Nexus mod manager, change game mode. Remember we talked about change game mode, rescan more games. You can do that from this tab. And of course, the help menu. Now, at the bottom left of the screen, you'll see you are not logged in. This is your login for Nexus mod Nexus mods page. Go ahead and click that. Now sending login token, and it will open a screen for you. And you present be presented with this screen. You must log in at the Nexus website. You need to log in, log in using your Nexus username and password. Of course, mine is Dirty Weasel Media. I'm going to put a little block over here so you can't see how many digits my password has. You're going to click Stay Logged In. That way, it'll just keep you logged in all the time. You don't have to keep doing this. And log in. And when you have the green little uh, icon over here, you know you're logged in. Now you can already start downloading mods from the Nexus. So up here on the main screen, you can see we have two tabs. You have mods. This is all the mods you've downloaded and installed using Nexus Mod Manager. And then you have plugins. We're going to go over to see what we've got in plugins. And you can see I actually have three things. You have Fallout 4 ESM, which is always going to be there. And you can see two mods that I installed manually prior to Nexus Mod Manager being released. You know, you're going to need to get rid of these. And my suggestion is to go over to data because I want to have these managed by Nexus Mod Manager. Go over to games are Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 4, and data. Now you can see here's the two mods that I installed manually. I've already pulled this one out, easier hacking one word ESP, and copied it. So I'm going to delete that one. And then I'm going to also show you how to download it using the Nexus Mod Manager on easylockpick.esp. So we're going to delete that one as well. And there we go. And you can see now they've disappeared from our plugins list. So all you have is a nice clean plugin. So if you come over to vanilla, it's gone as well. Go back over to Dirty Weasel and we're ready to start modding our game. So I'm going to show you two ways. Now remember I told you that we had an ESP, easier hacking. And I've already packaged it up into a RAR file. Now when you download mods from other sites or download them manually, you put them on your desktop or wherever you keep your downloads and you'll have them in a 7-zip or WinRAR file. You open this up and you can see easier hacking one word.esp. We'll show you how to do it manually using download from an archive. Come over to this plus button and you can see add mod from an archive. And we go to our desktop and you can see easier hacking one word.rar. Select that and open it. Now you've got easier hacking one word. To activate the mod, you simply click the check button. There you go. Now it's active. Come over to your plugins and you see it's back in there. Easier hacking one word. All right, so that was easy, huh? Let's go get a mod from the Nexus to go ahead and show you how to install from the Nexus. And you see I have the easier hacking with options, easy lockpick, guarantee lockpick by Rawberry 400. It's a mod I focused on in a specific video, but I wanted to go ahead and show you how to do it with Nexus Mod Manager. You go over to Files, and you see Easier Hacking All Options. I've already installed that using Download from an Archive. And then you have Easy Lockpick. That is the other ESP that we deleted from our data files. 
come over here to download with manager. And you see you come over to downloads and it's downloading the mod and it will just take a moment because next is a little slow today. There you go. And it's been completed. So easier hacking with options, easy lockpick, easy lockpick has been added. So up here, go and click OK. And it's now activated as well. When you come over to your plugins, you can see now you have easy lockpick. If you want to go ahead and come back over and deactivate the mod, simply deactivate the mod. And over in plugins, it is now gone. Simple stuff, huh? And you can reactivate it. You can also deactivate any specific mod in your plugins tab by unclicking the box. Or you can disable all mods or enable all mods. Let's say you wanted to go back and check on your vanilla profile. You see they're now disabled. And over in plugins, there's nothing there. And you can see now that this vanilla profile has nothing in it. I would suggest having one of both just to keep track of things. And you go back to Dirty Weasel Martin, and there he is. So you're all set. I hope this just gave you a primer on how to use Nexus Mod Manager in the future when trying to mod Fallout 4. It's a simple program, easy to learn, and it'll do everything that you basically need. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. My name's Cal, I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off. <laughs>